Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Erin and I have a scrapbook layout for you today featuring the Holly and Ivy collection from Close to My Heart. Before we get started with today's project, I just had to pop on here and say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, a big sincere thank you. For those that may not have heard or maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, I am a Close to My Heart maker and every year they offer an incentive trip and this is the first year I qualified and earned the trip and it's all thanks to you guys. It was literally down to the last 24 hours and I thought there's no way, it's not going to happen, I'm not going to make it, but I just had to reach out so I did, I put a post up just letting you guys know where I was at, and wow, did you guys come through in a big way. I mean, seriously guys, you rock, you are awesome, and I just can't thank each and every one of you enough. The enthusiasm and encouragement, the camaraderie and support was to me almost more exciting than earning the trip itself. So I'm so happy to be a part of this crafty community, and I just, yeah, I just had to get on here and say thank you. So I know you're here to see the layout so I'll stop talking but yes thank you guys so much and yay I'm going to Maui and I owe it all to you guys so we're going to be creating a scrapbook layout with the beautiful Holly and Ivy Christmas collection. Now if you I have the actual workshop if you look in the catalog you can get this just the paper pack Look at this layout, I think that's so pretty. But there's just the individual pieces, paper pack, sticker sheet, um, coordinating cardstock, picture my life card, di uh, die cuts, and a digital art collection. For those of you that like to create projects using your Cricut or your Silhouette or whatever die cutting machine you have, this is a lot of fun. There's also coordinating stamp sets that go along with the collection, Holly and Ivy card making and Holly and Ivy scrapbooking, but of course they are interchangeable. You could definitely use these on a card and these for a scrapbook layout. If you turn the page over one more time, you can see the scrapbooking workshop. So the workshop is pre-designed layouts that you can put together. This is great if you're learning how to scrapbook, you learn all sorts of tips and design techniques, or if you are a seasoned scrapbooker and you just want to create beautiful layouts quickly without having to put any thought into it, or of course you can get the workshop and do your own thing and tweak the design to suit your needs. So again, you get three separate layouts, double page layouts or 12 by 12. And with the workshop option, there are exclusive die cuts available that you can't get any other way. I also want to mention if you guys love making cards and you want to make your own Christmas cards, there is a Holly and Ivy card making workshop as well where you can just follow along or again do your own thing. So let's take a closer look at this paper pack. This is the coordinating sticker sheet. These are heavy cardstock weight stickers and I really think this is a gorgeous collection of um, titles and embellishment options. We've got word stickers down here and little circle circular elements look at that title Noel and then another title option here here and here lots of title options going on and I think this um, these deer are just so pretty very handsome guy isn't he so we have a pattern paper and there are two of each design but they're double-sided so we have the little woodland deer on one side and on the other side is this beautiful bold red and white word paper now we always have the zip strip or the branding strip at the top you can cut that off and use them as accents on your layouts. Then we have this fun speckled like a, a, a fawn and on the other side is a classic red and white stripe. Perfect for Christmas. Actually I'll leave that like that. And then this one has it's like a soft green color and there's just little white Christmas themed like pine cones and berries, little ornaments and, and pine boughs, all sorts of fun. There's like a little cinnamon bundle on there. On the other side is this holly and ivy paper. So pretty. Okay, let's see. And then these are the exclusive die cuts you get. So these just pop right out of there. All sorts of fun things here circles and tags and then this one is that title option so you pop that out and it says the word December attached to the page and you can create that layout 
These are awesome. It's like black with a chalkboard finish. So you get a couple of those. And then of course you get uh, coordinating cardstock to create those layouts as well. Along with all of that, you get photo placeholders if you want to create the layouts and you don't have your pictures yet you can put those down and then just add your pictures later and then you also get these die cuts now they don't look like much in here because it's hard to make out the shapes but look at that gorgeous glitter so you pop those out there's flowers and swirly shapes let's pop one of these out and just take a closer look at it so fun, huh? Just like gorgeous little shapes there. And then we have some greenery uh, holly leaves and some like little poinsettias and some sprigs of greenery. And then in the kind of the craft paper also, another handsome buck. And we've got again more flowers, swirlies, and little greenery sprigs. These are so fun for layering and tucking in your photos and just creating just a really gorgeous embellishment cluster. Lots of good stuff here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and we will get started. I wanna start by bringing in my Versamat here and I've pulled the pattern papers we need to create the layout I'll be working on today from the workshop. So if you look at the guide, it gives you all the cutting instructions on for each layout so you'll know exactly what size to cut each piece of pattern paper and cardstock and they even tell you the measurements like put this piece an inch and a half in from the left so it is foolproof guys but I am a very visual person sometimes I just don't even look at the cutting guide I just kind of look at the picture even if I want to create it exactly and just kind of go from there but we all have our own way of doing things so I'm going to be doing this layout today so again I've pulled those pieces of cardstock and I'm going to add some touches you know here and there and alter things to work for me. Let me grab my photos real quick. Last year we needed a Christmas card photo. I always like to put a family photo on cards going to our family. So we went down to uh, this historic Columbia State Park and just did this little family photo shoot. So I have and some of the photos from that that were my favorite. You know, when you do a photo shoot, they all kind of turn out very similar, but you don't need to scrapbook all of them if you don't want to. I just narrow it down to my favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down and I'll be right back. I'm gonna trim the zip strips off and trim the papers down. I have all my pieces here. This is cut down to 10 by 10, and then we have this pattern paper at four by 12, and then of course, two whole sheets of this gorgeous pattern paper. So this is going to be centered on each one, kind of like so, with a one inch margin all the way around, but there's a lot of pattern paper under there, and I don't necessarily need it, but I'm going to save it. So I'm gonna take a second to just use my paper trimmer and gut out the center of these. I did the first one off camera, but then I thought, you know what, I'm going to throw this in here. I do that every once in a while. That way, if some of you are new to scrapbooking, you can see how I do this. So I am, I have a 10 by 10 square going over the top. So I'm cutting out a nine by nine inch square from the center of this pattern paper. And that will give me plenty of space to adhere the overlayer to this base layer. And now I have this really pretty pattern paper to use for another project. I'm taking the time to line that up on my Versamat and that's going to help me get all my other layers straight when I go along putting this together. I am following the first layout pretty closely with just a few switches here. I'm going to use this candy apple red under my main photo. I think they use Harbor, but I wanted a pop of red on this layout. Now we, when we get to the second half, I'm going to switch things up to make them work for me. I love to distress the edges of the cardstock and it's just an extra step you definitely don't have to do it but I love the way it looks it just adds some texture and it's nice to it's just another detail to take in so I have all of the die cuts and there are also some of the sticker elements that we're going to incorporate I did remove the stickiness from the back of these so I can kind of move them around um, this one I'm pretty sure I'm just going to set that down and using my measurement marks at the top of the mat that helps me get that lined up nice and easy. 
One of my favorite things about working with Close to My Heart products is the color coordination. The cardstock goes with the paper packs, it matches the ink, everything coordinates beautifully. You can pull a red pattern paper from two different paper packs and it's gonna be the same red. And we all know how hard it can be to match reds, but it just makes it so simple and takes the guesswork out of it. No more standing there trying to like dig through pattern papers, trying to get ones that coordinate together. They've done the work for you. So it just makes it super simple and they're fun to put together. And also with the workshop, Close to My Heart does a, you know, an online event where you can put it together with them if you want to follow along. And it's really fun. It's a Facebook Live and you can find that in upcoming events, but I'll also leave it in the description box below. But the Holly and Ivy workshop is Tuesday, November 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific. Pacific Standard Time, so make sure to order your kits in time for that if you want to join in the fun. You can see I'm just tucking these little die cuts. We're making an embellishment cluster on either side of the photo, kind of originating from the lower corner on each side and just fanning out upward. So we're layering those and the ones down towards the bottom are going to be on top with everything else tucked behind. I hope that makes sense. And I love the bits of the craft paper they've worked into this. It's such a pretty color to go along with the rest of them. Um, the little craft die cut stars and then you see it in the deer and the pine cone and just little bits here and there. When I'm adhering these down, I just like to put glue on the bottom so that the top can kind of lift up. It has a little bit of movement, it looks very natural that way. And then I'm layering this sticker, just how they have it in the workshop. And then this little kind of flower star shape over the top of that. And I like everything connected, overlapping, like it's all belonging together. I'm ready to do the second half of this layout. I'm going to bring in another Versamat, scoot that over, and then we'll start laying down the layers of pattern paper. Now, I had one long strip, but I decided to save even more paper and cut that down to just these little pieces that we're showing. And I'm going to line that up with the layout on the left-hand side. And then we'll bring in that little tiny strip of harbor. Now, I don't know why I didn't cut this piece down. I guess it wasn't worth saving the center of it. I don't know. No rhyme or reason. So you could just do the two sides of that one as well. But this pattern paper here that looks like the chalkboard, it is exclusive to the workshop. That does not come in the regular paper pack and sticker sheet. I'm lining this up, just kind of eyeballing it. Let's bring in my T-square ruler and see how well I did. Ah, check that out, not too shabby. So if you look at their layout, they have four three by four photos. Now I only have three of them, so I'm gonna have to do something different. I'm going to follow the same configuration roughly, but then I wanna bring that red in over to the other side. So we have the same red, I've cut this down to a rectangle the size of my photos to fill in that missing photo space. Now, before I adhere that, actually, I'm going to sand it with a nail file here, and I'll just go ahead and give it that nice white edge, and then go ahead and use my edge distressor also. I did that off camera, and now I can tuck this in and get that into place here. Originally, I was thinking of using one of the Picture My Life cards to fill that space, and you know, that looks nice. I don't need a journaling block because I have the journaling space all the way to the right, so I'm just kind of looking for a decorative element. I like the deer, that works, but it's not quite what I have in mind. I spotted this craft colored tag sitting in my leftover bin and that kind of got me thinking. We have the buildable tag set that you can layer these up. There's little elements. This creates a cute little pocket that the tag can slide in. But I used the basic tag shape and cut a white tag and I'm using the toffee ink that's in the sponge here and just very lightly going around the edge to give that some definition. And now I'm using one of my retired embossing folders to give that some texture. So we'll go ahead and tuck this right behind the craft colored tag. I love to use my little Cricut spatula to lift up and slide things under. And I think this is gonna look really good. I love the tags. 
Before I adhere those down, I'm going to bring in my all-purpose mat and add a little bit of splatter to both the journaling block and the textured white tag that I created. This is the Dina Wakely Gloss Spray in the color Gilt. Shake it up really, really well, and then I'm going to unscrew the lid and just use the nozzle to tap and splatter these with that beautiful gold color. This is so perfect. I've been using it on my fall layouts as well as my holiday Christmas layouts. It's just a really pretty color. This does take just a little bit of time to dry, but look at how gold and shiny that is. It's so pretty. I'll go ahead and wipe up my all-purpose mat here, and then we can bring our layout back into view. This is another benefit of working on the Versamat. If you need to pick your layout up and move it, you can do that. It's a nice solid surface and it makes it easy. I have a tiny craft room, so I am constantly doing the shuffle in here. So I'm going to slide my tags back into place. I do want the craft one layered over the top of the white. And now we're bringing in the rest of the die cuts for the right hand side of the layout. And I'm going to tuck those up top, little holly leaves and the little pine bow here. And I am following along with the um, workshop, how they have their die cuts, except I'm going to keep some of them out. These words are from the coordinating sticker sheet. It says gather together. And I saved a few of those die cut pieces to tuck over the tags here coming out from the top of my photo so that it ties in with the rest of it. I'm wanting this little sticker here. We're going to layer that over the bottom corner. And then we can start building our layers on top of that. You can use 3D foam, which I have already gone ahead and put on some of these elements. I want, let's see, this little guy as well. A few more stars. Little word sticker here. I love that they've incorporated the journaling block into this layout. How many times have you put together a layout and there's no room for the journaling? You're like, darn it, because it's really one of the most important parts next to the photo. And a lot of us just kind of don't do that part. Are you guys guilty of that? I know I am. So I have a little bit of this holiday colored sequins, and this is a new tool. This is the pickup tool. It's in the core catalog. You can find it towards the back with the tools and you sharpen it. And then it just, uh, it's like a pencil, but it's kind of got this texture. It doesn't really feel sticky to the touch, but it grips these little sequins and, and little embellishments like this really well. I'm just going around placing them and then I'll go through um, off camera and adhere those with the micro glue dots. I'm just bringing in more of the red. So I'm only picking out my red sequins to add to each embellishment cluster. And I want red in at least three points, three main points on the layout. So I'm feeling like it needs a little bit more in the lower corner, which I'll address here in a moment. I want to dress up these tags just a little bit here. So I have some of this black ribbon from my stash and I like to cut that on an angle. And then I'm gonna use some of this waxy flax. This is no longer available, but this was the cranberry colored waxy flax. And I'm gonna tie a bow around the base of this ribbon here. And I loved this stuff. I wish they would bring it back. It's just a really cool product. I've been hoarding it for a long time. So I guess I might as well use it. Since the second tag is smaller, I'm not going to put a ribbon through the top there. I'll just uh, tie a little bow with some black twine and use a glue dot to make it look like it's tied through the top of that tag. Because this is a Christmas layout, I thought it'd be fun to add even more sparkle and shine. So I have my clear shimmer brush and I'm painting over these die cut pieces. So when it dries, it's going to have this beautiful shimmery sparkle to it. The workshop calls for a white line drawn with the gel pen all the way around the perimeter of the black cardstock. And I didn't catch that on camera, but if you go over to my Instagram and check out the still shots there, you'll be able to see that detail. I pulled this little red and white heart sticker off the coordinating sticker sheet because I just needed more red down in that corner and that is just enough to draw your eye. So I'm really happy with our little tag cluster embellishment we created in uh, the spot for the fourth photo, which I did not have. And uh, the pocket cards were a good idea to put there as well, um, but I just like the way the tag turned out even more. Be sure to check the description box below for all the supplies I used in today's layout, along with the event details if you want to join Close to My Heart and putting these layouts together in their Facebook event. Here's a few more videos I think you will enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Tap that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber, and I'll catch you next time.